It's episode three of Supplement Reviews, and I have to say, of all of the reviews that I've done and am going to do, this may be perhaps the most important, because I think there are a lot of people out there who are not aware of the fact that lithium is available over the counter. And if more people knew that, it would be interesting, because it would empower a lot of people to take control of their mental health in a way that they kind of haven't before because lithium is a pretty essential medication when it comes to mental health. I think, you know, you hear the statistic that one out of every five people suffers from some kind of mental disorder and lithium was one of the first medications used in psychiatry. It dates back to, it's been used in, uh, since like the 1870s, since the early, early days of modern psychiatry. And it's actually a, an element. It's one of the periodic elements. So it's, it is a medication, but it's not. I mean, it's not like a, it's not a chemical. It's not a, I mean, it's a chemical, but it's not a, it's not a compound in the same way that, uh, say, Xanax or Paxil would be. And I, this would be a good time for me to do my uh, disclaimer that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a, nu a nutritionist, so whatever I say here, it's just my layman opinion. You can take it uh, for what it's worth, but I would highly recommend consulting a doctor uh, before taking any of my advice. You, you do so at your own risk. So now that that's out of the way, um, lithium can be hard to get uh, prescribed because it has a reputation for being powerful stuff and for being dangerous. But the interesting thing is one of the reasons why it's dangerous is because of the form of lithium that is prescribed clinically, which is lithium carbonate. So it's distinct from what we're talking about today, lithium aspartate. Uh, lithium carbonate is about 20%, if my memory serves me, about 20% lithium, 80% carbonate. And it, because of that compound and because of the fact that it's uh, prescribed in such high dosages, uh, something like two grams a day, which would be like 2,000 milligrams, would be like a, would be a typical dosage. It can be hard on the kidneys, and so it can lead to reduced kidney function later in life, and sometimes that even leads to death. Now, of course, there are people who live out their entire lives, and they either, their kidneys are either fine on lithium or... Maybe they have, they have a little reduced kidney function, but it, it doesn't do anything to affect their quality of life. They die of something else like a, who knows, a heart attack or cancer or, or what have you. So it doesn't really, it doesn't lead to mortality. But in other cases, it, it can cause problems. And, um, well, it's just kind of interesting that, that lithium carbonate is still prescribed instead of other lithium molecules. Here we have lithium aspartate. It's actually probably the second most common over-the-counter form of lithium, the most common being lithium orotate. I was on lithium orotate for a while. I switched over to this uh, for reasons I might get into later. The long story short, I read an article that orotate might have mutagenic qualities, which means that it could mutate your cells. Um, lithium aspartate also has some supposed dangers because aspartate is um, similar to aspartame. I believe that aspartate actually breaks down into aspartame if, again, if, if memory serves. And that's, people have concerns about that. I personally don't. I think that the concerns about aspartate are very trumped up and that they're, they're almost kind of politici politicized. Uh, and I drink plenty of diet soda anyway, so a little bit more aspartate or aspartame is just a drop in the bucket for me, so I'm, I'm totally fine with that. And aspartate is actually an amino acid, which I believe orotate is an amino acid too, but... So neither of them, I think, could be all that dangerous, especially in the recommended dosages that we see here. Again, I'm not a doctor, so don't take any of this as gospel, but anyway... I personally, I've had issues with depression, you know, pretty much all my life. I've had trouble coping with things. It's been something that I've struggled with. Um, and I've, I've been on a lot of uh, prescription medications. And 
none of them seemed to really were they either they either didn't work or worse yet they actually made me feel worse lithium aspartate lithium in general over the counter lithium is the one uh medication where i felt a a profound difference in how i felt and uh it it carried on past the point of of placebo effect you know you can you can have a placebo effect for a certain amount of time but there comes a point where you've been taking it long enough and you're like no this is this is maintaining an effect that um, a placebo would not be able to maintain the best way I can describe it is that it kind of gives your emotions buoyancy uh, almost like a submarine like if you, if you imagine your, your state of mind is like a submarine and you're you think of something sad or something that upsetting that makes you sink if you're not on lithium you it just sinks and sinks and sinks and it takes a long time to go back up what I've noticed is that when I'm taking uh, lithium it I'll think of something upsetting and it, I'll feel myself start to sink and then it slows down and it stops and it starts rising back up that's the best metaphor that I can come up with for for what I feel like it does um, my my dad actually was prescribed clinical lithium in the 70s and he had to go off of it because he was um, like unfortunately like most people his social life kind of revolved around alcohol and his doctor told him you really can't drink on this stuff um, it's either the lithium or the alcohol you have to choose one or the other and unfortunately he chose the alcohol at that time and I think that was one of the biggest mistakes he made in his life because I, I think that the lithium could have done a lot for him even though it was the clinical lithium and, and therefore in my layman opinion uh, inferior to this stuff but when my dad told me that story it was what caused me to, to wonder you know I wonder if lithium is available over the counter and after a quick internet search I found out that it was and there's a vitamin store a few miles from where I live that that offered it and I was like wow it's it's amazing how one inter internet search can kind of change your life but anyway um, another interesting kind of some interesting facts about lithium uh, lithium citrate which is a completely different lithium molecule was put into 7-up early early in the back in the day and it was put in as a because lithium is a, a type of salt it's a it's a it's an alkali metal salt so it provided flavoring and it also made people want to drink a lot of 7-up because it made them feel good because back in the late 1800s early 1900s sodas were actually more medication than they were uh, beverages they they were for curing ailments you know coca-cola famously had cocaine in it and you know a lot of sodas were like that so um, another interesting fact is that they did a study down in Texas where they actually um, uh, they found that counties down in Texas that were rich in uh, that had um, rich lithium deposits in their water supply uh, just natural lithium deposits had much lower rates of suicide than counties that had low levels of lithium in the in the drinking water so lithium is one of those medications you know doctors psychiatrists they they hesitate to put somebody on lithium they kind of treat it as a last resort but it's a good last resort to have because it's kind of the last resort that's almost definitely going to work people they're just wary because of the the health risks with lithium carbonate clinically prescribed lithium so um it's uh it's interesting it's kind of similar to how nitroglycerin tablets are still prescribed to uh, heart patients you know uh, nitroglycerin or, or, uh, capsules have been around for what a hundred years or more over a hundred years but they're still used in medicine because as primitive as they are as a medication they still work and that's that's often the case with a lot of old time-tested medications you know they may be primitive they may be simple but they work and they kind of work they haven't really been improved upon with time in particular I've been on um, 
I've been on just about every SSRI, and I also, for a very short time, was on uh, Xanax, but I did not like Xanax at all. But um, anyway, we'll start talking about dosage. Now, I'm not going to tell you how much I take, because I do take more than the, than the uh, 5 milligram uh, recommended amount, but I'm not going to tell you how much, because I don't want anyone copying me. Um, I will tell you that I mentioned earlier that lithium carbonate is about 20% lithium. Uh, lithium uh, orotate and aspartate, each one of these capsules is 5 milligrams of, of, of lithium. It's, it's and, it, and the labeling varies from brand to brand, but um, the, uh, the, the amount of actual lithium and lithium aspartate, it's about, I believe, 5%. About five percent lithium, ninety-five percent aspartate. So, in each of these capsules, you take five times twenty, and that's how many milligrams it is total. But the um, but the amount of actual lithium in it is five percent of that, which is five milligrams. So you're taking you're you're almost kind of microdosing is the point that I'm getting at you're you're microdosing compared to taking um um clinical lithium both because of the the different uh f conversion formulas or the different ratios of of uh, lithium versus the uh versus the carrier molecule um and then also just because of the differences in dosage period you know, we're talking 2,000 milligrams versus well, well less than 100. So, and I want to tell you, my doctor, my personal physician is aware of the fact that I take this stuff. And when I go to the doctor for my annual checkup and he does my blood panel, he tests for lithium in my system. He's, he keeps a close eye on my kidney function and then also my lithium levels in my blood. And if you start taking this stuff, I highly recommend, number one, that you tell your doctor that you're on it um, or that you're going to go on it. And then number two, go ahead and request to them to uh, have those things uh, looked at in, in your blood panel if you, if you have annual checkups. Most people these days, when they have an annual checkup, they, they do a blood uh, test, a blood panel. And so... If you don't have a, a personal physician, get one, number one. Number two, get annual checkups with, the, with a blood test. Number three, uh, tell your doctor about this stuff so that he or she can test for both your kidney function, um, which is in most standard tests, but just so that they can keep an even closer eye on it in, in context of the fact that you're taking lithium and then also the um the the lithium levels in your blood uh, uh mine are actually still lower than average despite uh taking this stuff but that's just me so i think that covers pretty much everything this is a this is a supplement that i think is illegal in certain uh countries in europe uh europe is a lot stricter when it comes to health supplements and it's one reason why I'm actually glad to be an American because um, we have a, we're, our our uh, supplement uh, market is a lot less regulated than other countries, and so it empowers the people to make decisions about their own health that they you know that they want to make. So that's a great thing. So um, you can expect this stuff to be about ten, roughly ten bucks for a hundred. Uh, uh, veg caps, so about ten cents per veg cap, not very expensive at all, especially considering how much better it can make you feel. And um, I just, I just decided personally that you know what, I want to, I want to go right to this stuff instead of taking other uh, medications and then kind of working my way to this stuff, uh, having a doctor finally prescribe me this stuff. I want to go with what I know works and. Uh, take this stuff right off the bat, and uh, I'll take I'll take the risk. Even though, in my opinion, with this stuff, it's not that much of a risk at all. Uh, but if I live to be say 80 years old instead of 90, but it's but it, but those are much happier years, uh, then I'm going to go for that. But um, 
like I said, and I feel the need more than in the, than in the other uh, videos to say to you, make sure to talk to your doctor. I am not a doctor. These are just my non-doctor opinions. So don't take this as medical advice. I'm just telling you what I believe and what, what I've, what I'm doing myself. So talk to your doctor, but I am glad to be making this video because I think that it at least makes more people aware of the fact that lithium, which seems like this kind of not so attainable medication actually is attainable. And you as a regular person, uh, can go ahead and try it if you, if you want to, although of course at your own risk. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know if you're on this stuff. And if you know of anyone, uh, any, any person that you know um, who could benefit from this stuff, maybe show them this video because uh, I really think that this is one of those uh, supplements that could kind of change the world. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, go ahead and leave a comment and uh, tell me your opinions, experiences, all of that. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. And subscribe to Captain Unusual for more.